Now, you're probably mostly wondering why it is that people get infections, and uh, this is the um, $10 million question. We would love to know. Um, in most people who have recurrent infections, however, there isn't an obvious uh, reason for it. Um, it. And I like to tell my patients that it's some combination of bad luck, bad genes, bad bacteria, and every now and then you have an issue with hygiene. But by and large, the reason people are getting uh, bladder and kidney infections is really not well known. Now, um, there are definitely things that can cause it, and whenever anybody comes to see um, has more than you know three infections in a year or more than two infections in three months, we recommend that they do get a referral to a urologist because we do like to check out some of these things and see if there's something we can do to, to prevent the infections. Um, when people come to see me, they're, um, by the time they get to see me with recurrent infections, they're frequently desperate and scared and worried that they have cancer or worried that they have something horrible wrong with them. Sometimes they're ashamed and they think it's something that they're doing or they're not clean enough. But let me reassure you that by and large, people who have recurrent bladder infections have nothing obvious wrong with them. It's just one of those things. Now, but whenever anybody does come with bladder infections we always, or kidney infections, we always like to make sure that we're not missing something. Now, there are several mechanical, correctable, preventable causes of recurrent urinary tract infection. The second is a problem with the kidney. Now, let's say, for instance, you have a kidney stone. And you, if you have a big kidney stone in your kidney, those stones can be colonized by bacteria. And no matter how many antibiotics you take, they'll never go away because the uh, bacteria are living in little nooks and crannies on the stones. And until the, the stone is for a foreign body is removed from the kidney, you'll never get rid of the stone. Now, you might say to yourself, if I had a kidney stone, wouldn't I have pain? And in general, um, kidney stones will cause pain. Little kidney stones will cause pain. But every now and then, you'll have someone come in with a big kidney stone that have absolutely no symptoms. And the reason is, is because usually kidney stones uh, cause problems if they try to pass out of the kidney. And if they get to a certain size and shape, there's no way they're going to leave the kidney. They just sit up there and collect bacteria. So... In general, the first thing we want to do when anybody comes in with some recurrent infections is we want to check inside the kidneys and make sure there's nothing going on. In general, we can do this with a simple ultrasound. Um, it's not perfect, but it's better than a lot of tests that we have to check for stones. It's painless, and it has really very few, you know, no risks associated with it. Uh, so if there's no kidney stones, the next thing we check for is to make sure that the kidneys are draining properly. Um, there are some problems uh, with the kidneys, either congenital or things that you can develop later on your, in your life that stop the kidneys from draining properly. And so if you have a kidney that doesn't drain properly and the urine backs up in the kidney, it can lead to recurrent kidney infections. Again, this is something that we'll see on an ultrasound. The next thing we like to do is look at the bladder. And if there are some problems with the bladder that can lead to recurrent infections, uh, the most common thing that leads to recurrent infections is a bladder that doesn't empty properly. Now, why do bladders not empty properly? Well, there are a lot of reasons for it. Um, this can happen if the bladder has uh, fallen. What is a fallen bladder? Well, a fallen bladder is a kind of a, basically kind of a hernia that occurs to women um, sometimes after childbirth, sometimes after hysterectomies, that causes a, um, a weakness in the wall between the bladder and the vagina. And what can happen is the bladder can pooch down into the vagina and make a little sac. Sometimes when women come in with this problem, the urine will collect in this little, it's called a cystocele, and it won't drain properly. And the fact that the urine stays in the bladder for a period of time sets, up, sets them up for recurrent infections. Now, there are plenty of women who come in with fallen bladders whose bladders empty perfectly well. And, and in those women, I'm not really sure that that's a risk factor, but there are certain women whose bladders have fallen down. Second thing is, so um, there are also people who don't empty their bladders just, just for no very good reason. In order to empty the bladder, the bladder muscle has to squeeze the urine out, and some people, especially as they get older, that bladder muscle, like a lot of our muscles, gets a little bit weak, and it doesn't have the oomph that it used to, and sometimes you'll retain a little bit of urine. Now, usually retaining a little bit of urine is not something that we think is going to cause recurrent infections, but recurring, you know, retaining a lot of urine in the wrong person, a lot can cause this problem. Um, the next thing is, is uh, you know, sometimes the bladder from surgeries, if bladder lifts or certain things um, make the bladder not work that great and retain urine. Sometimes people from diabetes, the bladder can be weakened and not empty properly. Uh, and those are all risk factors for, for not emptying the bladder. But if the bladder we find doesn't empty properly, then we'll start working on some things to see if we can get it to empty better. But we want to check that first. 
The second thing that can cause a, um, recurrent bladder infections is that the level of the bladder is that you can get a foreign body in the bladder. Um, when uh, people don't empty their bladder well over a long period of time, they can develop stones in the bladder. And stones in the bladder, like stones in the kidney, can be colonized with bacteria. And what will happen is, is those bacteria will get into the bladder, hide in the nooks and crannies of these little stones. They're not like river stones uh, when you have a stone in the bladder. They're more like a porous rock, like a, like a pumice. And what will happen is, is these little, little um, bacteria will get into these nooks and crannies and be inaccessible to the bacteria. And so until the foreign body is removed, the infections will keep coming. Next is a foreign body from some kind of um, surgery. Sometimes in the past, um, there are a lot of things that we've used to help lift bladders or um, hysterectomies and things like that. Not uncommonly, um, when women come in with recurrent urinary tract infections, we'll find that there's something in the bladder, like a stitch or a little piece of mesh or something from a, a forgotten maybe from a long ago surgery, maybe from a recent surgery. And what will happen is as long as you have a, a foreign body or something in the bladder, you'll never be able to eradicate the infections. So that's the things that we see at the level of the bladder. The next thing is is the urethra. And in the urethra uh, in women, it's only about an inch long. It's very, very short. But every now and then what can happen is that you can develop a little cyst called a diverticulum. It's like a little pocket. And what can happen is the bacteria can get into these little pockets and it can be difficult for them to drain. Sometimes these diverticulum can be hard to see and hard to find, but if they're there, in general, they'll cause a swelling somewhere along the urinary tract, and these things can be a risk factor for, phys for infections. Now, so those are all the mechanical, physical causes that we usually think of as far as urinary tract infections in women. Now, uh, the, how often do you see this stuff? Pretty rarely. I would say that maybe 1% to 5% of people who come into our office have any identifiable physical cause. And you might say, well, you know, why am I having the infection? Well, that leads back to our problem, you know, the bad luck, the bad genes, the bad hygiene. Um, and we'll talk about some of those things. Let's